Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. In today's video, we're going to briefly analyze how Arsenal shuttlers and their left sided play within their 3 2 5 killed off Fulham by halftime and their 3 0 win at Craven Cottage. So, in today's video, first we'll focus on Fulham's shape, then we'll shift to Arsenal's 3 2 5, and lastly, we'll take an in depth look at Arsenal's left sided moves. So, when we break it all down and we do look at the board, we have Arsenal in the 4 3 3 and Fulham in a 4 2 3 1. So, first we'll look at how Fulham looked to approach this game out of possession and they drew dropped off into two banks of four, which left them in a 4-4-2. And that ensured that they could be 3v3 in that midfield zone with Andreas Pereira dealing with Thomas Partey, and then Lukic and Reed dealing with Xhaka and Udegaard. Arsenal looked to attack them in a 3-2-5, with Trossard often dropping off into that gap of space between Lukic and Reed. You witness Udegaard and Xhaka pushing beyond the midfield bank into space between the lines, and then Zinchenko was tucking in towards that midfield zone to help Thomas Partey in that area, and then Gabriel Gabriel shifted out into a left center back position. What Fulham looked to do to ensure that Thomas Partey and Zinchenko couldn't get on the ball was by having Mitrovic and Andreas Pereira sitting ahead of them and blocking off the passing lanes in towards that zone. But even in those situations, Arsenal still had 3v2 out of the back, and it would be a tough task for Fulham to ensure that Zinchenko and Thomas Partey couldn't get on the ball. There were situations where Thomas Partey dropped in towards the back line to ensure that he could receive the ball and help Arsenal push forward forward. And then there were simply situations where neither Mitrovic or Andreas Pereira could pick up Zinchenko, and then he was able to receive possession in that midfield area. That could pull out De Cordova Reed to apply pressure and close him down. And that's where you'd see Xhaka at times shifting in towards that wider area on the outside of the midfield four to receive the ball. And from there, he could help Arsenal progress their play. But even with Fulham's approach, Arsenal's box midfield with help from Trossard that at times would make it look like a pentagonal shape ensured that Arsenal could find avenues to bypass Fulham's front six because you have Odegaard who would drop into space ahead of Robinson and at times it would pull out Lukic but then Trossard could drop off into that space and if he doesn't pull out one of the center backs he's an option to receive the ball and then Jacques is also in that gap between De Cordova Reed and Reed and from there if he receives possession he could push forward as well. Arsenal enjoyed more success down their left hand side and a lot of it stemmed through Zinchenko receiving the ball beyond the front two. From there, he would pull out De Cordova Reed, and then he could slide the ball out towards Martinelli to get him in 1v1s against Tete. The other alternative here was that the manner in which Fulham pressed often left Xhaka free if he shifted out in towards the wider area, and we witnessed situations with him and Udegaard shifting in towards those zones, and then receiving the ball in pockets of space between the Fulham midfield bank, which allowed them to push forward and progress play out in towards the wider area. Martinelli's goal that was ruled out stemmed with Zinchenko sliding the ball across De Cordova Reed so Martinelli can get into a 1v1. And then that's where you see Arsenal being able to push forward down the left hand side. You have Xhaka running beyond the midfield bank ahead of Adarabayo. And that's where Martinelli is able to combine with Xhaka, who does a very good job of receiving the ball ahead of the center back. And then locating Martinelli's run off Tete and playing the ball across the two defenders, which allowed Martinelli to carry the ball into towards the left half space and from the six yard area he was able to fire a shot on goal that Leno pushed into the path of Robinson and fell in towards the net. And then even the build-up to Arsenal's second goal witnessed the front two pressing Gabriel and Saliba, but Saliba doing a very good job of playing the ball around De Cordova Reed stepping towards Zinchenko, and then you have Thomas Partey closed down as well, which allowed Xhaka to receive the ball freely, and from there he was able to carry the ball from his own half in towards Fulham's third to run at Tete. That resulted in Xhaka sliding the ball out to Trossard across Tete, and Trossard was able to carry the ball in towards left half space, and from there that's where he's able to see that Martinelli and Odegaard are making a run towards a penalty area. Odegaard's calling for the ball freely at the edge of the box, but Trossard ends up taking the ball towards the byline. He loops his cross in towards the six-yard area, but because Robinson's focused on Saka, he doesn't close down Martinelli, who's goal side of him, and by the time he does attempt to recover, Martinelli has a good positioning to nod the loose ball beyond Leno from point-blank range. Ultimately, what you do witness from this Arsenal front five is that with Trossard leading the line, 
line, there is room for varied movement across that left side of the pitch. There are times where Trissar will shift out towards the left touch line and Martinelli will move into a central area. And there are even times where Martinelli shifted into a more central area in that shuttler role, whereas Xhaka hugged the touch line as well. On the outside of that, in terms of Arsenal pressing, they did a very good job of ensuring that Fulham couldn't build out of the back. They had Trissard and Odegaard leading the line, and if Odegaard did look to push forward, that's where you would see Xhaka stepping towards Lukic, and then Martinelli at times would tuck in towards a central area to close down Reed if he was in a deeper midfield position. Thomas Partey was often tracking the movement of Andreas Pereira, checking in towards his own half to get on the ball, and Saka would close down Robinson. There were times where Odegaard was simply blocking off the passing lane in towards Lukic to ensure that Xhaka could potentially hold his position, but Xhaka often did a very good job of pushing forward to close down Lukic if need be. On the rare occasion where Odegaard wasn't stepping forward to close down the center back, then he would sit on Lukic, Xhaka would close down Reed, and Thomas Partey would close down Andreas Pereira. In these situations, Fulham were often looking to build from the left-hand side, and they would get the ball out to Solomon, who would be closed down tightly by White, and from there, he would try to play the ball in towards Mitrovic, but Mitrovic was often closed down superbly by Saliba, and at times Saliba did get help from Xhaka or Thomas Partey, but for the most part, he did a very good job of neutralizing Mitrovic's threat in that opening half. Outside of that, they would attempt to play balls towards Pereira, but Thomas Partey often stepped in, and for majority of that opening half, when Fulham attempted to build from that left-hand side, they struggled to get beyond the Arsenal centre-backs. In the same light, when Arsenal were capable of winning the ball in the middle third, they broke in transition swiftly, and that's where we ended up seeing the significance of of Xhaka and Odegaard in those advanced areas, as Xhaka was often looking to push forward and combine with one of the wide players to bypass Adarabayo and Tete, and we witnessed that with Odegaard sliding the ball in towards his path, but he dummied the ball to take Adarabayo out of the game, and that's where you ended up seeing Trissard and Xhaka combining. They bypassed the center back, and from that position, Xhaka should have increased Arsenal's lead. And then even in the build-up to Arsenal's third goal, they won possession at the halfway line, and it stemmed with Martinelli running at Tete and from there as he looks to push forward at the Fulham right back he locates Trissard's run off the right back and Adarabayo doesn't track it instantly it allows Trissard to receive the ball in left half space and that's where you see Odegaard making a free run in towards the penalty area because Saka's occupying Tareem and Robinson the cross goes over Robinson's head you can see no one's tracking Odegaard's position when he does receive the ball and that allows him to take it down he isn't closed down by either Robinson or or the wide player tracking him, and he's able to cut across Lukic from this position and fire a tame effort beyond the keeper. So as you can see, the combination of the vertical movement from Arsenal shuttlers along with their intent on exploiting Tete and Adarabayo proved decisive in regards to the final result. 